Hello everybody and welcome back to the last part of the nmap scanning tutorials. Now in this tutorial we will download some of our own scripts and we will run them against our target in order to discover some of the vulnerabilities it might have. Now once you finish this tutorial right here you will know more than 80% of people that use nmap and it is really essential for you to get this tool right so you can perform your scans at the best. So, first of all, let us change the directory to the nmap scripts directory. So it is user share nmap scripts. If you type here ls, we have here a bunch of scripts and mostly these right here, which is cve 2015 and then some number, are certain vulnerabilities that were discovered in the age of this number. So basically this one was from 2017, this one was from 2000. Uh, 15 and so on and so on but we want to discover all of the vulnerabilities that could occur in a certain target so for that we want to download some of our own scripts so just open up Firefox and open up a new tab and just type here full scan github once it loads up the Page, we want to click on the first link which will lead, lead us to the github repository for this script so just click here on the first link and here we are on the github repository of this nmap vulnerability scanner as you can see right here we have the usage which we will cover after we download this script now in order to download this i already show you in the previous videos you just copy the link right here and we will use the git uh, program that we already installed. Let me just change my directory. And it's not there. It is in a root. So that's about it. Let us just delete these two files from previous videos. We do not need them anymore. And we want to, we want to type here git clone and then we paste the link that we copied and then we add dot git now it will take some time to download this and once it finishes we will have our script installed on our Cal Linux machine I believe it will finish here yeah, here it is and if we type here ls we can see the wall scan is right here as a directory. In order to go to it, we just type here cd wall scan and we can see a bunch of the files that it that we got with it. But this isn't the only program I want to install. Right now we want to install another script. So open up your Firefox once again, add a second tab, and just type here nmap walnurse and then once again type here github. So it will once again lead you to this page and you just want to click here on the first link which is from the github website. The procedure is same so just copy the link of the page, go to your directory so let me just go one directory back and make sure that we are in the same directory where Wallscan is and just type here git clone, paste your link right here and add dot git to it. It will also download the direct in the script into our directory and we will be good to go. So as we can see this one has finished faster than the previous one. So right now we should have both of them, both of these scripts in our directory. As we can see right here we have Wallscan and we also have nmap owners. Now let us make a directory nmap scripts in order to put them both into that directory so we don't have them like this right here so let me just move Volscan into nmap scripts oops let me just and move the nmap owners into nmap scripts and right here we should only have the nmap scripts file and if we change our directory to it we will have our both scripts right here so now that we downloaded them and now we can run them. So in order to run them we use the same 
command that we used in the previous video. So nmap dash dash script. And right here, instead of typing the equal sign, which we would which we would use in order to specify one script, we want to remove the equal sign and just put here space and just type here volscan and nmap volners. As we can see right here, we specified two scripts instead of one, and it will use both of them in order to discover the vulnerabilities. So after this, we want to add minus sp in order to discover the version of the services running on open ports. And right here, we want to also add the IP address of the target. So let me just check once again what was the IP address of this target. It was .1.7. So here we type 192.168.1.7. And we let this run. So let me just enlarge this. This could take some time, but not too long. It should finish relatively fast. And it will print out a bunch of the vulnerabilities that it found on this target. Now I know that this target is vulnerable since it is made vulnerable in order for us to test it and we can see that we got a different output from previous scans so here we have open ports and these vulnerabilities as it says right here if you see no findings it means it didn't find any vulnerabilities on this specific port and it basically uses a bunch of these websites in order to scan for the vulnerabilities and if we scroll up, we can see that the on the TCP open port, which is running Apache, it found a bunch of vulnerabilities right here. Now, you can test these scripts on your own machine in order to find out if your PC has some of the vulnerabilities. But basically, even mine has some of the vulnerabilities that go up to 5, sometimes 7.5. But mostly these aren't so dangerous, these that are low numbers. This is basically a mark for the vulnerabilities. So if it is 1.2, it is a really small vulnerability, but it's still there. And if it is 10.0, it is basically an easy exploited vulnerability. So if you just find something like this, you need to update your device as soon as possible. Or in this case, in, in this case Apache 2, since it is found on the port 80. Let us just see if there is anything else, and we can see also, also on the SSH port, it found some of the vulnerabilities, which aren't so highly rated, but they are still there. And also, once you find something like this, you can basically just copy this link right here, which will lead you to a page on Firefox if you paste it. You just open a new tab and paste the link from the vulnerability, and it will open up the page where it will describe in greater details uh, the vulnerability that it discovered. So here we can see the mark which is 10, the access complexity is low, the confidentiality is complete, the integrity is complete, and the availability is complete. In the description you can check out what the vulnerability is, which in this case is model arc win32 uh, in something, 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 let us just not read all of these numbers. When running on Windows, does not ensure that request processing is complete before calling isap unload for isap.dll module, which allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code via unspecified vectors related to a crafted request, a reset packet, and orphan callback pointers. Now, this is basically a vulnerability, and if you wanted to, for example, exploit it, you would basically just copy the name of the vulnerability, which in our case is this one. So just copy, and you can just go onto the Google, paste that vulnerability, and type here exploit, and hope that you will find something or someone that already has written an exploit for this vulnerability. So we can just try to find it. We know that is it is. We can click on any link, for example, and try to find if anyone has written any exploit for this. No, we do not want to go right here. There probably is something, but we won't really spend so much time trying to find it. I will just check out some of the links right here. 
I agree, whatever, let's go. So, available exploits. So, we can just check here available exploits. And we have the module name for the Metasploit program that we haven't still covered, so we won't be showing it right now. But it's basically an auxiliary module which allows us to scan the vulnerability that we just discovered in the Metasploit framework. Now we can also try to find the vulnerability with the name of the vulnerability itself, but not like this. But like this, Apache mod is AP exploit. And we can try to find something. Let us check right here. And here we found something which is basically a C program that probably exploits this vulnerability. So here it is, you could just copy this entire program and just paste it into a C++ file, compile that file and run it and you would exploit the vulnerability. Of course you will need to change some of these certain things right here, for example ports, IP addresses and so on. But if you wanted to, you could do that. Not really sure what it would give you, but I believe it would give you a reverse shell. Not really sure what this vulnerability is. So we won't exploiting we won't be exploiting it right now since it requires an auxiliary module from the Metasploit framework. For now on, we will just leave it on here, where we have all of these scans completed. And you can also try to research all these other vulnerabilities and see if there are any uh, exploits written for them that you can use. But we will cover the exploitation in some of the future lectures. For now on, we just wanted to see how we can scan the target for a certain vulnerabilities and we did that so that's about it for this now before i close this lecture and close the nmap lecture I, I just want to show you that there is another tool that you can use if you want to it is basically almost the same as nmap and it is almost the same called which is amap now the amap is basically also a scanner it, the, differ, the difference is basically in just one letter. It has some of the different syntax for the scanning part, but if you want to, you can check it out. I won't be covering it since we covered a bigger tool, which is Nmap, and more useful tool. You can, you can check out some of these options by yourself, and you can use this as well if you want to. But that would be it for these Nmap tutorials. If you learn all of the stuff that we covered in the previous videos, you will be having some of the intermediate to advanced knowledge of Nmap. Now maybe in the advanced section we will learn how to write some of our own Nmap scripts, which will even more boost your knowledge about Nmap. So in the next video I will show you how to install the OWASP virtual machine that we will use for the web penetration testing. It doesn't take that long, it basically takes a few minutes, might be taking longer to download since it is around I believe 1.5 gigabytes or something like that. But once you download it, it will take only a few minutes to install. And then we will start web penetration testing, which will be a longer section since there is a lot to cover. And I hope I see you in the next lecture and take care.